so my electric motor wasn't working so I broke it by accident what not to do you're trying to get this off it's a bit stuck do not hit it with a hammer here instead tap here and here and then it will slowly come off um, also a thing I learnt was if it's corroding on the outside it's probably corroding on the inside too this aluminium oxide all came out of the inside now the actual problem I had was this spring here should be like that side that pushes the brush by the way this is what it's meant to look like I got it second hand for $150 and have been using it happily for six months then one day it didn't turn on it was actually only a small problem but I had turned it into a big problem I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to attempt pulling the magnets back in with this compass. So inside is south, outside is north on the housing. I'm getting myself confused here because after breaking it, I put the magnets back in differently. Now it doesn't really seem to make sense. The magnetic field goes like this. So the question is, do I put see this magnet south on the inside, north on the outside? After a while, I decided I needed to look at an animated GIF. Magnets should face each other, and each side of the motor should have the same polarity. On this motor, the magnets are very long, but are made from two magnets. They weren't bolted on, so they must be glued. These ones clearly look like they go together. Don't want to go together, but they fit together. That one says south on the inside. That one's south on the inside. Okay, so I think they do go together, but because now they they were one magnet, now they're two magnets. They don't want to be one magnet again. You glue a broken magnet back together. The Mad Science Network says yes, it is possible to glue your magnet back together with common two-part epoxy. The resultant mag magnet will be very close to what it was before. The problem is how to hold it until the epoxy can harden. These magnets put, push each other apart very strongly. I don't know the exact shape of your magnet pieces, but one way to make this easier is to put them on a smooth and thick block of steel like the bottom of Mum's old black frying pan. When on the steel block, the two halves will not repel each other so strongly, and hopefully you will be able to get them together and hold them with a C-clamp from Dad's workshop. Spray the surface of the steel block with Pam No Stick Spray. If that doesn't work, send me a photo of the magnets and I will re recommend some other way. There is a gap between the magnets on each side. That is also the space that the bolts go through. I figured I could just jam two pieces of wood in there, wrapped in plastic so the glue wouldn't stick to them. There isn't much clearance around the rotor, about one millimeter. So this needed to be pretty accurate. There was one small magnet shard in between two larger pieces that I didn't glue back in because it was too tricky to make it stay in place. Well, to be honest, it looks extremely dodgy. I think there's a pretty reasonable chance this won't work, but let's try it. This bit holds the brushes and also the rotor bearing. It's made of plastic and is bolted into the aluminium housing. That one's good. This one, not springy enough. So I tried making a spring from the stainless wire, but it's not springy enough. However, then I found a proper spring that's about the right size. I unwound some turns of the spring and bent it into the approximate shape it was meant to be. I think the spring came from the pump of a bottle of hand sanitizer. The spring isn't as strong as the other one. 
but it does seem to push it back reliably. So I think it will work. Now the trick to putting one of these back together is the rotor goes into the brushes first and then you put the housing on. This casket there is meant to go around that rim but it's pretty difficult. I'm just going to put it back together without it, um, just for a test. The motor goes underwater so clearly that gasket is very important. If the motor works, I'll figure out what to do about that next. This is the part I don't understand. Somehow, magically, the um, bolts find the holes. <laughs> it actually works. Spinning and not hitting the magnets. That <laughs> makes me pretty happy. This is a 24 volt motor, but it will turn with 12 volts, so I'm testing it with just a single battery. Hey, look at that. It vibrates a bit, but it did before. I'd like to see you glue your diesel engine back together. Okay, uh, I don't think I should put it in a water like that. I've got to get the, I've got to re like those two. This is aluminium, those two pieces, that's steel. Uh, corrosion on the outside, this corrosion on the inside. Um, I need to fix that. Probably with some kind of paint. Sanding off the oxide. I'm not really sure what is the best way to maintain aluminium. This has several different kinds of metals in it. It was painted and the paint flaked off pretty badly. It sometimes seems like painting aluminium actually makes it worse. Or maybe just more noticeable. But anyway, I decided to paint it with etching primer. Those gaskets were clearly important to keep the water out, but they didn't want to go back in. So I'm using this gasket in the tube stuff. In a petrol motor, the gaskets get hot and have to resist oil and petrol. On this motor, it only needs to keep up water and won't even get very hot. It didn't go as smooth as I'd have liked, but it seemed soft enough that it would squash down when I did up the bolts. removing masking tape from the terminals checking that the brush springs are working one more time refit the commutator bolt the commutator in bolt the terminals down Push the brushes aside and insert the rotor. Replace the housing, which has the magnets glued on the inside. 
the end cap has the other bearing and the bolts that hold everything together. To find the holes for the other end of the bolts, just use the force. Well, I hope that works. This is the main component of the top end of the motor, the switch. It selects the power levels and forwards and backwards. How it works is a story for another day. I'm just going to clean it. The switch terminals are all labelled with wire colours. Fixing this type of motor is very simple. I never even had a service manual. Although it would have been great if I had known how fragile the magnets were. Then there are these skinny wires that plug into the top and make the lights come on. They're basically just a voltmeter. This is the prop it came with. It seems to work pretty well. Although I understand an optimal sized prop makes a big difference, but that will have to be another video. Okay, let's test it in the water. That's my pro under the silver tarp, making the motor installation a little bit cumbersome. That feels pretty powerful. Let me just pull the anchor up. It went two and a bit knots. How it went before? Seems as good as new. I feel that using a small electric motor like this maintains the aesthetics of the engineless sailing. If there is any wind, I'll sail. And if I want to go a long way, I need to choose a good wind and tide. But if there really is no wind at all, I can still move the boat a couple of miles. Without listening to a horrible noise, smelling fumes, buying petrol, cleaning the carbs, or melting the ice caps, electric propulsion is definitely less range, but it's much more reliable, and that is way more important.